It hasn't been since 1992 that there's been a municipal by-election in Vancouver, and this is ramping up to be a big deal. There's a lot of problems to solve in our city, and we at Access Television have invited candidates from one city and sensible Vancouver. But we are lucky to have with us today, representing the Green Party, Pete Fry and independent Jean Swanson, here to get into a little civic discussion with MTS and I. Right, thanks for being here. Well, guess, thanks, thanks for inviting us. I guess the big uh, election issue and why you're both running, one of the reasons why you're both running is the issues around housing and homelessness. So what is your position on, on that? Well, obviously, housing is the critical issue in the city, and it's affecting all stratas of the city as well. It's also affecting small businesses because a lot of small businesses can't even, you know, afford their employees or employees can't live in the city anymore. So it's percolated to the top. It's a real issue for all Vancouver. It's not just people who are renting or people who are suffering uh, homelessness or what have you. I think where things are really starting to change, too, is that I think a lot of uh, voters are starting to be cognizant, become cognizant of the fact that developers are calling the shots at City Hall. And, you know, the Green Party is the only elected party that doesn't take developer donations. Uh, I know Gene also issues de developer donations. Uh, I think fundamentally people are looking at the fact that, that that's a real conflict of, of ethics and interest when the very people who the land use decisions that City Hall makes are financing those same politicians. That's a conflict of interest. And I think, you know, people are waking up to that. I think they're looking for change. Gene? So we have a huge homelessness problem, over 2,000 homeless people on the streets. We have the average rent $2,000 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. Um, we're calling for immediately ending homelessness by building modular housing, getting the money by hook or crook, just like the city got it for the Olympic Village, just like the city got it for the Arbutus Corridor. Um, taxing, we want a mansion tax. So if people have a house that's worth more than $5 million, they pay a higher rate of tax. That way we could get the money to build the social housing that we need. We need good social housing, beautiful social housing like they have in Vienna, where 60% of the housing is social housing with swimming pools and community centers and daycares. We can't rely on developers to build the housing we need anymore. We have to make housing a human right, not a commodity. So. What we're talking about is a rent freeze using all the city powers, the powers of housing agreements, the power of its tenant protection policy to freeze rents as much as we can and the rents we can't get that way to call for a provincial rent freeze to open up City Hall so that it becomes a center of people who can work for justice and bring the voice of people working for justice to City Hall and push on the province for the powers that we need to, to make the city affordable. So, so Jean, you're touching on the multi-level cooperation that's needed at, in solving yeah. homelessness. And as I understand it, the powers of municipal government are not as far-reaching as we'd like them to be. So there are um, developer privileges that we've seen in the past few years. So specifically, how can... Um, as a city, and issuing business licenses and inspecting run-down places, what other powers can... Well, so, and, and, and Gene touches on an excellent point. The, the fact of the matter is, is that rent freezes and all that kind of stuff, it is the Resident Tenancy Act for the province of British Columbia. So it's mm -hmm. pretty complicated to amend. It needs the legislature to amend. What I would like to see us do as a city is actually have our own renter's office. So currently, if you have an issue with your landlord or what have you, you have to go to the RTB, which is a provincial agency. Okay. If we had a city office of the renters, uh, we could actually tie in a lot of development permits, uh, renovation building applications, which currently is a little bit ambiguous and murky, and we don't use it to apply the standards maintenance bylaw, and it allows a lot of these sort of cosmetic rent evictions that allow uh, landlords to evict renters and then come back with a higher rent, uh, cosmetically renovated property, and we see this all over the city. So if we had a city office that could empower renters, could give them the supports and the resources to tie them into the RTB and track and all the other agencies that can support them and tie it with the development permits so that we're keeping tabs on that and we're not allowing this kind of thing to go unfettered. We also need to start loosening up some of the red tape. There's a ton of uh, grandfathered illegal renters, or mm -hmm. rentals, sorry, throughout the city, basement suites, what have you. Uh, the city's new direction on, on RS, uh, on single-family home zones, 
uh, is to allow stratification of them. So they'll allow you to put in a legal basement suite, a legal laneway house, but they're strata units. So they become a vehicle for speculation. So what we really need to be doing is making it easier for those illegal rental suites to be brought up to code, to make them legal, to make them safe, livable, and habitable, but not break the bank and cost landlords and keep the costs down and make sure that we're, we're actually providing affordable rental in the city. Okay. And Jean? There's a lot that the city can do with the laws that it has now. For example, Section 23.8 of the Standards of Maintenance Bylaw, it says the city can go in and do the work when a landlord is not keeping a place mm. up to snuff. And if the landlord doesn't pay for that, the city can put it on his taxes. And if he, if the, he doesn't pay his taxes, the city can take the building. It could become social housing. There is no reason why they not shouldn't be enforcing that, and they should be enforcing that. And if I get in there, I'm going to push really hard for that. There's this tenant relocation and protection plan. If the city, if a, if a landlord comes to the city and says, I want to, I want to, renovate, I want to kick these people out because I'm going to renovate it, which happens a lot, the city can say, well, before you do that, this is what we're saying, bring us a signed contract that the tenant can return at the same rent. Mm -hmm. That's using city powers. That would be a way of reducing rent evictions. You couldn't probably get rid of all of them, but could get rid of a lot of them, and it could be by using city powers. And the city could do it without any other level of government. Mm -hmm. So those are two things that nope. are really important. So recently we've seen the uh, rise of hate groups organizing in Vancouver. We've seen Soldiers of Odin organizing in East Vancouver. Uh, there was a rally at City Hall where the mayor said that the city can't do anything. You spoke at that rally, Jean, mm -hmm. and you were critical of that. Can you talk about what the city can do about these hate groups organizing in that city? Well, I think the city just needs to investigate all avenues for trying to prevent hate people from spewing hate. There's just no excuse for it, and I think we should stop it. I think clear direction to the Vancouver Police Department to thoroughly investigate those kind of activities and actually set up files on these guys because currently I don't think we're doing enough investigative work on, on, on exactly the level, uh, the level of organization and what they're actually up to. And I think uh, we should be. And I mean, I, I hate to suggest like increased surveillance of anybody, but I think when we're talking about hate groups, I think that's an appropriate place to start. And Pete, you would be, um, if elected, joining Adrian Carr as a Green, yeah. and you would be independent. So one quick closing question. How, we'll start with you, Jean, and aligning yourself within the sea of vision um, members in the city, how, how will you navigate and who, who will you work with as an independent? Well, I would work with a lot of um, social movement groups. Mm -hmm. And I know Adrian has a deal with the NPA, I think, that if she makes a motion, one of them will second it. So maybe I could cut a deal like that. Okay. <laughs> and, um, well, before be careful we... what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but the thing is, what, what I'd like to do if I get in there is open up City Hall so that justice-seeking groups can use it as a place to bring forward their issues, get support for it, push on all the other councillors to get support, push that process up to the other levels of government mm -hmm. so that we can try and get the kind of city that we need. And in case this is the last question, don't forget to vote for Diana Day of COPE for school board. Thank you. And I'm Jean Swanson, independent <laughs> for council. So, and, and it, it's true. So oftentimes the issue at City Hall is in order to get your motion on the floor, you need a seconder. Mm -hmm. So Adrian is forced to go to either Vision or the MPA and try and cut deals. Unfortunately, Deals often come with strings attached, so those motions are, are watered down. Sometimes they just get flat out denied, and they can't make it to the floor. And it's yeah. important to bring them to the floor because that's where the public debate happens. And that's where the opportunity for the public to see what's actually going on at City Hall happens. So that's a big motivation for me is to get in there and allow us to support each other, to second each other's yeah. motions, to daylight a lot of this stuff that otherwise might get buried. Uh, and in case I don't get a chance to say anything more about it, we have uh, three candidates for school board with the Green Party. Uh, Janet Fraser is coming back, and she, of course, was the, the much, uh, she had a tough time as the tiebreaker in the school board in the last election before they, they dismissed it and fired it in the D.C. Liberals. And we have Estrelita Gonzalez and Judy Zykowski all running for school trustee in this by-election. My name is Pete Fry. October 14th is a by-election. And uh, thanks. That's it. Thank you both for being here. And don't forget to vote on October 14th. Get involved.
I'm not surprised if Guangdong is the guy that's really behind the uh, all the wealth and all the all the uh, experience and all the power and all the all the goodness that uh, in Chinatown. I mean, Guangdong probably is is the you know he may be the head right now of uh, of corporate Chinese North America. I find that the spirit of Guangdong is all around us. Well, Guangdong is looked on more than anything else as an ancestral god. But I think Guangdong is a spirit. He's a spirit that's, that's alive. It's much more than, um, than simply an effigy or something of the past that you can, talk, you can tell little kids and there's a good story behind it. More than anything else, I think he has emphasized the spirit. And the spirit is is what lives. And sometimes you see that spirit, a certain amount of pride, a certain amount of, of coming out and doing something that's beyond the call of your own duty or your confines, your own station in life, or even your own courage. Um.